Cardano was just named the best layer one blockchain solution at the recent Blockchain Life Awards taking place in Dubai. Not only is it good to see the entire network being recognized, but it's also good to see the entire Cardano community come together to vote for such an important award. As a part of today's video, I want to dive into the latest updates in the ecosystem, including some of the top DEXs, stable coins and liquidity, as well as the upcoming launch of V2 versions of some of the biggest protocols in the ecosystem. What's up, Eda Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host here, Fareed. Today, just like always, we're diving into the latest updates going on in the Cardano ecosystem. First things first, there's a lot of action taking place in Dubai. We have the Blockchain Life Awards. We've got ETH Dubai as well as Token 2049. But we have the Cardano Layer 1 winning a massive award at the Blockchain Life Awards. Following that, we've got updates surrounding MinSwap and USDM followed by updates when it comes to Cornucopius in their content creator affiliate program. After that, we have the deployment of the Genie Sealed Trading Bot API, as well as their first vote when it comes to the Gens DAO, followed by the release of a temp check for the release of Indigo Protocol version number two. We've also got the OrcFax validator licenses minting right now. I believe there are six remaining to be minted, but I want to highlight how you can go ahead and join in if those six aren't claimed by the time you're watching this video. Now, coming to a close here, we do have Book.io with their BookCon taking place in about 48 hours from the time that I'm shooting this video. And then we've got a whole slew of features coming in from the Dex Hunter team. As always, if you guys do appreciate updates like these, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down everything going on in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions or just want to share your opinion, then leave a comment down below. If you want to take it a step further, consider delegating with the official DAP Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DAPP. Right now, not only will you earn your traditional ADA rewards, you also earn the Matera utility token as well as the Sarah utility token, given the fact that the pool is a partner pool for both of those ongoing ISPOs. Again, thank you all for taking the time not to watch the content, but also to support the stake pool. Moving right into the first update for today's video, I want to go ahead and break down the fact that the Cardano Layer 1 has won the Best Layer 1 Award at the Blockchain Life Awards. Now, if you missed this, this was quite the ride. Um, initially, we had the Multiverse or eGold token outpacing Cardano in terms of votes. We saw some really, really sketchy things happening with the votes, with the vote tallies changing over time. However, it does look like Cardano has took the lead or taken the award back home. So I want to go ahead and quickly play um, about a one minute video breaking down the acceptance speech by a few members from the Cardano Foundation. And then we're going to go ahead and move into our next topics. Uh, best layer one solution, Cardano! Woo! Oh my God, preview. Come on up. Greetings. Maybe a brief word? Yeah, thank you very, very much. We've always heard how exciting Dubai is as a global blockchain hub. And we are here to answer that call. We love the energy and we love the excitement and the appreciation for using public permissionless blockchains. And we're here to help any way that we can. So this is not just for us, this is for all of you. So thank you very much. Cardano Summit 2024 in October. You want to say something, bro? Exactly what I was going to say. We are hosting our own event this October. We're back in Dubai. So please get in touch with us. We'd love to see you at our event. Thank you so much. So pretty short and sweet there. Again, friendly reminder that the Cardano Summit is taking place in Dubai for 2024. We just saw it taking place there in 2023. In terms of the vote tally there, as you'll notice, we have Cardano up 5,400 votes, 5,000 for ton coming in number two, and then eGold or Multiverse X with 4,085 votes. Thank you for everybody, right, for taking the time to sign up and to actually vote. And for all the other content creators out there to really spread the word and to really get Cardano to the forefront. So really good to see us redeeming ourselves there. I know there was a lot of lost confidence following the actual vote in the disappearing of the vote tallies about three days before the voting ended, a lot of people were really confused. And for a moment, um, we saw a ton being listed above Cardano. So looks like the Cardano community has pulled together 
and rightfully so, right? Deserving of the best L1 layer solution. Again, we've got pictures of the team here and the tally count, but that will do it there for updates surrounding that first bit of news. Next, we've got some news surrounding MinSwap and their recent blockchain or on-chain governance vote surrounding adding USDM and providing liquidity directly towards the USDM slash ADA liquidity pool. So as it stands right now, we have 97% of the votes in favor of creating and adding more liquidity for USDM. The quorum was exceeded by 2.6, the amount of min tokens that needed to be used for the actual vote. And this will be bringing, if I'm not mistaken, $40,000 worth of USDM and an equivalent amount of ADA into the min swap protocol. So right now, I believe they've already added 10K USDM, which has been minted and paired with $21,000 worth of ADA. And we're going to see the remainder of that being deployed over the course of the next couple of days, if not weeks. Moving over, we have an update from C3 or Charlie 3 with the USDM reserves currently sitting at just shy of a quarter million dollars, so $240,000 USD. Of course, keep in mind, we don't have minting for retail adoption, retail adoption or retail users just yet, but I personally think that that's where we're going to see a lot of people minting and beginning to really use the USDM stablecoin. Now, yes, it would be great if it was a little bit higher, but of course, again, give the team some time to build up. They've got a lot in the pipes right now. Um, I've heard about some cross-chain potential. We've also even heard of partners within the European regions. So this team is really beginning and right now. They're only supporting USD, but I have high hopes for additional stable coins and additional networks. That will wrap it up there for updates surrounding MintSwap. Next, we've got an update surrounding Cornucopius. So the Kopi team has recently upgraded their tokenomics. They also just announced the fact that they're moving over to base, which did create a little bit of FUD. However, all of that aside, they now have a content creator affiliate program. So if you're a content creator, whether that's on YouTube, X, whatever the platform is, Twitch, TikTok, you're able to create content. And if you have reach and you want to basically earn, right? from sales or from um, pointing people to the Cornucopius marketplace, you can go ahead and do so by signing up for their 20% revenue share program. So applications are open. Keep in mind that this does not guarantee that you'll actually be selected. But as you'll see here, you can provide your legal name, your Cornucopius account name, your email address, number of followers, links to your social media platforms, etc. And essentially what's going to happen is as people use the Cornucopius marketplace in mint or purchase assets, you'll receive a 20% kickback or 20% of the revenue that you've generated or brought over into the Cornucopius marketplace. Next, we've got a brief update surrounding the Genius Yield Protocol. So they've just deployed their trading bot API. If you're not familiar with this, this allows for you to programmatically without a user interface, the ability to interact with the Genius Yield Dex. And this is huge for anybody who's more tech savvy or more developer related, because again, you don't have to go through the traditional web user interface. So it states here that this supports TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, Python, Rust, and more. And in terms of the abilities or features that it provides, again, you can seamless, seamlessly place an order and manage it with precision. You can analyze market trends and you can also build your own personalized trading bot. So um, this team has gone ahead and really made this um, a one-stop shop platform. They have their market maker bots, they've got their trading bots, and they've also got their uh, smart order routers, which are all open source and available to the public to run. So this team really backing up the decentralization ethos here or the decentralization mantra that Cardano is known for and really putting a lot of these tools back into the community's hands. Now, in addition, we have another piece here coming out from Genius Yield. This is directly related to their Genius Yield DAO or Decentralized Autonomous Organization, which is hosted on the Clarity Protocol. Now, what they did is about a month ago, they had opened up the very first DAO or the very first vote for proposals to be submitted for um, potential inclusion for funding round number 12. Again, keep in mind that that'll be kicking off on the 26th of April of this month. And with that, they've now gone ahead and provided a short list of proposals made by the community that they do want to go ahead and propose for funding round number 12. In a nutshell, this includes uh, adding liquidity or bootstrapping the Genius Yield Dex. They also have a proposal to add support for USDM slash Cardano native token trading pairs. There's also a proposal for tutorials for market maker bots in that open source framework, as well as strategies related to the Genius Yield Dex. They've also got an options trading platform and that particular proposal was submitted back in funding round number 11. 
However, it didn't pass, but it looks like the community does want to take a second shot at bringing that back up for funding round number 12. They've also got another uh, proposal here for bulk swapping of dust tokens. So imagine you've got a wallet with very small amounts of tokens, being able to swap that over or consolidate that over into ADA or larger amounts of another Cardano native asset. Now, if you are a GENS token holder and you want to go ahead and vote for the ongoing um, proposal, you can head over to clarity.vote. You can select the Genius Yield DAO. And of course here, once you connect your wallet, you can begin to cast your vote based off how many of the GENS tokens you currently hold. That will do it there for updates surrounding Genius Yield. As always, if you do enjoy updates like these, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, then make sure you leave them down below. Again, consider delegating with the official DAP Central Stake pool in order to earn your ADA, Sarah, and your Matera. Moving into the next piece, we've got a brief update surrounding the Indigo protocol and V2 of their platform. So as it states, if approved, the V2 upgrade is scheduled to take place on April 22nd of 2024. And this is in reference to their ongoing temperature check, which is live right now on their form. But it states here, please note that the Indigo web app will be offline for approximately four to six hours during this period. I highlighted this in my prior update. Go ahead and make sure to check that out. It breaks down their monthly stats as well as the brand new parameters being added to the Indigo protocol. But this is expected given the fact that they have to migrate all the liquidity in the smart contracts from using V1 all the way over into V2. So there will be a little bit of downtime and to make sure that you don't get liquidated or that you don't have any issues, please make sure to go ahead and adjust or review your collateralized debt positions ahead of the move over into V2. Now, if I jump over to the actual platform, as it stands right now, a preliminary or provisional result does appear to be in the favor of launching the V2 version of the protocol on the 22nd of April. And again, this is the actual Indigo platform. So it's past the temp check stage and it's now available for voting. Now this breaks down the actual features or the new parameters. It also highlights the deployment process as well as the initial feature activation, which does include some parameter upgrades. So moving forward, when it comes to the minimum amount of tokens that need to be used for voting, that minimum quorum will be set to 5%. There's also going to be a 450k indie maximum treasury spend limit with a 100k ADA maximum treasury spend limit and no spend limit on any other treasury assets. So again, jump in here, check out all of the updates, all the news. And they've also gone ahead and provided the audit executive summary, breaking down their V2 audit findings, which was conducted by MLAP. So it's pretty straightforward. It is a summary, so it doesn't break down all these specific issues but it does give you a pretty big overview of what to expect and what the team has faced and made updates for. Next, we've got updates surrounding the OrcFax protocol. So OrcFax is a, is a Oracle provider here on Cardano. So their job is to bring data that's off chain securely on chain and archive that for protocols to use. And as it stands right now, we have the launch of their incentivized testnet. And we also have the release and the official mint beginning for their OrcFax validator licenses. So this allows for you to run a node where you basically are now a part of the Orfax validator network. And as you publish facts, which is what they refer them as, you're able to earn the fact token, their native governance token. So the mint opened up this past April 15th at 1800 UTC. The mint for whitelisted participants or people that have reservations closes on the 18th of April at 1800 UTC. And for anybody else who wants to pick one up, if they haven't all been minted out, you can go ahead and begin minting on April 19th at 1800 UTC. As it stands, we have 94 of the 100 OrcFax validator licenses officially already claimed. So not many going over to the public, if any at all. Keep in mind that right now, the whitelisted face is still open, but once that closes, the, the general community can go ahead and buy into those six remaining licenses. So go ahead and make sure to check that out and check out my latest interview sitting down with Peter Van Garderen, breaking down their incentivized testnet and when we can expect for everything to launch on the main net. Next, we've got an update surrounding book.io. BookCon will be kicking off here in about 20 to 48 hours. So very, very close, taking place in McKinney, Texas, where the book.io office is. And we're expecting for Josh, um, Ben, as well as Charles Hoskinson, Patrick from Endmaker to all be in appearance or to all be in attendance to break down everything going on with book.io. So I wanted to quickly Plug that in here if you are within the United States and you're within the Texas region, might be one that you want to go ahead and quickly check out. Last but not least, we've got a brief update surrounding the DEX Hunter protocol. 
And right now, they now support all 11 DEXs on Cardano, or they're just about to be supporting all 11 DEXs on Cardano. If I'm not mistaken, they're working on completing the integration of the order book model, which includes AXO, which also includes Genius Sealed, and I believe as well, which include the Splash Protocol. Last but not least, Mellon and the team are hard at work providing uh, features or providing a glimpse for their roadmap for 2024, which includes features like leverage trading or margin trading, staking and governance, bringing Cardano support to major cross-chain analytics platforms, as well as wallets. And then last but not least, improving their UI and swap stability to be bulletproof. So that will do it for today's video, a quick one, but I want to quickly touch on the Cardano Blockchain Life Awards, the MinSwap team and USDM, Cornucopius, Genius Yield, Indigo, Orcfax, Book.io, and last but not least, Dex Hunter. If you found anything along the way to be helpful, or if you just learned anything new along the way, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down or highlighting everything in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, then leave them down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.